Okay. Okay, good afternoon. Let's see if this mic works. Can you hear me in the back well? Yes? Okay, very good. So good afternoon. I'm here again. And after this wonderful keynote by our CTO Werner Vogels, it's now time to look at some details of how things actually work on the AWS platform. And this talk is going to show you how to architect for the cloud. There are some little pieces of demo, like some little videos that um, will show you how to do things in practice. But of course, given the limited time, 40 minutes, uh, I can't dig into that many details for you. And of course, if you have very good technical questions, you can always ask us later. We have a, a specific section for you called the AWS Success Clinic that can help you and answer uh, your very difficult questions. So let me just uh, do this. Sorry for this. So let's uh, look at the agenda for uh, uh, today's talk. So first, we're going to introduce the concept of architecting for the cloud and see uh, what it means and how cloud architects need to know before they even start to architect for the cloud. Then I'm going to show you seven key principles that we've learned at Amazon Web Services and that can really help you build successful uh, applications and implementations in the cloud. And then we're going to close uh, with some uh, conclusions and some final thoughts. So let's start with the introduction. So this is Singapore, the place where I live. And uh, this is, of course, a very nice piece of physical architecture. But when it goes to the cloud and to cloud architecture, there are, of course, some very important differences that need to be considered even before you start doing things. For example, the main difference is for sure that the physical world is very different than the cloud world. And scalability works in a different way, in an easier way, but in a different way. The way you uh, can talk to these services, the way you can interact with these services is also different. And of course, costs can be influenced by the way you architect. In the physical world, as a cloud architect, as an engineer, as a system, system administrator, you typically don't influence costs that much. You typically have an infrastructure already uh, there for you, ready to be used. You use it, and eventually you ask for more additional capacity and additional infrastructure. But you don't really think about the individual pieces that can influence your costs. And actually, since costs are, of course, uh, a very important part of your business, even if you're a technical person, you can influence costs when you architect in a cloud environment. So let's take an example. For example, storage in the physical world is pretty much divided into three parts or three different types of storage. The DAS or direct attached storage, the plain old hard disk drive sitting inside your server, or a SAN, a storage area network, typically an array of disks still attached to a single machine. And then you have the NAS or network attached storage, which are um, storage devices that are attached to the network and can be typically used by multiple machines together. In the cloud world, there are uh, lots of acronyms. Uh, and uh, for example, for EC2, we have the local storage, which is very similar to the DAS, the direct, uh, directly attached storage. But we also have a block device, a disk in the cloud, that is called EBS, Elastic Block Store. And EBS starts to differ from the counterparts in the physical world because it is like a disk in the cloud, but it's redundant and persistent. So even if there is a failure on a physical disk that hosts your virtual disk in the cloud, you actually don't lose the content of that disk because the content is replicated. And if you need uh, a high durability, you can snapshot EBS into Amazon S3 which is not intended to be used as a file system or as a block device, but rather as a very durable uh, storage option for your backups. In fact, it's called an object store. And when you upload things inside S3, they're called objects. And then we also have other storage options, not typically used for large amounts of individual files, but maybe for large amounts of files, for many files. For example, SimpleDB, which is an automated 
uh, database in the cloud, or SQS, which is a messaging system. And if you focus on, M on uh, Amazon S3, the simple storage service, for, uh, for a few seconds, let's take a closer look at the durability that S3 offers. So S3 is designed for 11 nines of durability. 99.9999999999%. This means in practice that if you have, for example, one million files, you lose on average one file every 100,000 years. And the reason why we are able to design uh, one of our services with such high durability is because every time you upload a file on Amazon uh, S3, it's called an object, that file, that object, is replicated across multiple uh, physically isolated locations in the same region. And even if one individual copy fails, because there is a hardware failure or something, we detect that and replace that copy. You don't need to worry about that. Instead of spending time in uh, building redundancy and making sure that your backup works and is safe, you can just drop your files inside Amazon S3 and we take care of the rest. Sorry, the clicker didn't work for once. So what about scalability? Scalability is essentially uh, about being able to take a system and scale it out and up to medium and large and maybe back to medium and back to small, etc. And scalability is typically very dif difficult to do in the physical world because there are physical limits. In the cloud, there are not these physical limits anymore. And so you can think about scaling a system in a very uh, interesting way. And when we talk about a truly scalable system, there are some key elements that should be there. One, it should maintain performance. If you have, for example, 10 servers, and every server has a specific performance, if you keep adding servers, you expect the performance of the individual server to be roughly the same as the other ones. And when you scale in the physical world, this is actually very difficult to maintain because there might be network uh, bottlenecks, there might be other kinds of issues. So a truly scalable system should keep performance at the same level even when it scales. The second thing is that it should be operationally efficient. It means that the cost of adding capacity should be roughly equal to the value of the uh, infrastructure that you add there. So to add the same amount of capacity, you should be able to pay roughly the same amount of money. It should be resilient to failure. It means that if one single individual component fails, you as a user of this system that is scaling shouldn't notice. And fourth, it should also be cost effective as it grows. The first three um, elements of a truly scalable system, we take care of them for you on your behalf. Because we make sure that the network is good, that the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure works very well. And we built our system in such a way that when you scale your uh, servers, your storage, we take care of making sure that everything works very well. The fourth one, we have tiers on, our, uh, on the cost of our services. So the more you use them, the less you spend for the individual uh, unity, the individual components. And scaling is about two, two types of scaling. Uh, one is scaling uh, up and down, and one is scaling in and out. Scaling out, also called horizontal scaling, is about taking a system and then adding additional similar type of uh, uh, storage or servers to this system. And then, of course, scaling in means going back. While uh, scaling up means that you basically grow the sides of the uh, server that you're using or the size of the storage that you're using and then in, of course scaling down means reducing that size So let me show you a first example now a very quick video that shows you how to scale up Amazon EC2 This is a web management console and we are here we stopped a large instance and under instance actions we can change the instance type we can go from an M1 large to maybe an M2 quadruple extra large with more memory and more CPU power. And once we do this, we can notice that the type of the instance has just changed, M2 quadruple extra large. So to use it, we just need to start it again. So it's very simple to scale up or even scale down an EC2 instance. 
everything is 